Hello all, my name is Amy Fansale. I'm married to Brian Fansale. We have four lovely children and lead a church in Maritzburg called North Hills Church. It is such a privilege to have the opportunity to share with you and I really trust that it is God's words that speak through me um, and that you are encouraged and challenged. I want to jump right in into Matthew 1, the genealogy of Jesus Christ the ancestors that came before the birth of Jesus Christ and there are five women that are mentioned in that genealogy and the significance of the fact that they are mentioned makes me think that there's something that God wants to say through the lives of these women to us and I think particularly in this season that what he has to say through these women is incredibly significant the first woman that's mentioned, Tamar, and her story is outlined in Genesis 38, and it's a story of injustice at the hands of others. The, sin of, the sins of her husbands um, inflict pain in her own life, and she finds herself in an incredibly powerless and desperate situation. The story carries on and I really encourage you to read it and it's like it just gets messier and messier and messier and after reading it you kind of left thinking I don't even know why this is in the Bible um, what is God trying to say through this but I find myself in a position now where I'm so encouraged by this very story and the messiness of it because it speaks to me about a God who is not intimidated or afraid of the messiness sin causes in our lives. Whether it's our own sin or the sins of others that affects us. He, God, can do something with it and he can use us despite it. He can use us despite where we find ourselves in life. It speaks of a redeemer. It speaks of someone who's come to save us from that very sin. And that is where our hope is. No matter how terrible or how all-encompassing that sin is, God can save us. Redemption. God uses her life. Here she is in the genealogy of Christ, despite such a messy life. He takes her from a place of shame and puts her in a position of honor. And that is our God. That is the God that we serve. He can take us from a position of shame and put us in a position of honor. He is our Redeemer. It speaks of the fact that there is someone with whom our future is secure. Finally, there is someone who we can entrust our future into his hands. There is someone who can pluck us up out of the mess, dust us off and make us clean again. There is a God bigger than the mistakes we've made or the mistakes that others have made against us. He will still have us if we will have him. He chose to mar despite messiness because it speaks of his power, his greatness, his love. And this story, I feel like, is just threaded, every aspect of it, with hope. And that hope is what God offers us. No matter where you find yourself, even if it's a position where you feel completely powerless because of the actions of others, you have a hope in our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And he can change your situation and save you from it. I really trust that, that this hope, this real hope that we have is something that you can tangibly understand right now today, that the Holy Spirit would make it clearer to you, make it real. Again, I encourage you to, to read the story, keeping in mind that this lady is now written in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the Savior to come. She is part of his lineage because God will choose us no matter what. Mm -hmm.